I'm Justin. Welcome to Cashman's Garage. Today, we're going to be doing a tune-up on a 1987 Chevy Corvette. Should be a lot of fun. Let's get started. So we're going to start this project, get some decent lighting in here, and pop open the hood. The first thing you want to look for is going to be the air filter. In just about any car, if you want to find the air filter, follow the ductwork. Where is it pulling the air in from? So here we see, we can actually see the edge of the filter sticking out. It's a little foam, regular panel style filter. Should be pretty easy. Looks like we got one little wing nut type dealie over here. Swing around. And we should have one more here. And I think it's just a matter of unscrewing these. We should have this thing out and ready to go. I already loosened up the other side. So once this guy's loose, here we go. We have ourselves an air filter. Should slip right out of here. Not the worst in the world. Usually I like to take it, stick it in front of a bright light, and if we look and see any light coming through it, it's still got some life left in it. So this one here, you can... You can see there's actually plenty of light shining through here. So it's actually not in terrible shape, but we're going to replace it today anyway. All right, this one looks a lot better than the old one. So we're going to stick this guy in. Hopefully get a little better airflow. Nothing to it. Line it up just like it came out. we got our pleats going towards the front of the car. Line up our little wing nuts here. And screw her down. Nice and tight. This gasket should uh, should crush a little bit. Nothing too crazy. Make sure you get it lined up all the way. Otherwise, you'll have a hard time getting the other side in. Once these are tightened down, step one of the tune-up is done. Then we're on to plugs, wires, cap, rotor should be nothing to it. So now we get to the next part of our tune-up, which is going to be our cap. Now really you could do the cap and rotor right now. It's just going to be under here underneath this plate, held by three little torque screws, one of which is missing. Probably the same last guy that butchered that little spot. Bunch of jerks. So you could really do it in any order. What we're going to be doing is our spark plugs are kind of down here at the ends of our wires. We're going to do them on both sides. It's actually some decent wires. Now they come up here to our cap and rotor, which we'll get a better view of in just a second. So as you can see, with that cover off, we now have access to our cap. Now, I just moved it over to the side here. The reason I like to do the cap and rotor before ripping all the wires and all the plugs out is actually the same thing that this last guy did. He actually marked each of our cylinders in the firing order. Now that works, it's great, and you leave this paint and everything on here, and it's helpful for the next guy, but as you can see, it's not gonna help us much because nothing left of the letters. So we're gonna take these individually and we're gonna move them onto our new cap and just kind of put that to the side for now. And this way we don't mess up our firing order. So when you're doing this, you just wanna make sure that you don't mix these up. This guy is gonna go here. This guy is going to go here. So as you can see here, we made some pretty decent progress, but what I didn't realize is that these two guys over here, there's just not quite enough room to drag them over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mark them, just like the last guy did. This way I know where they're going to go once I got our new cap and everything back over here and all together. So there's going to be a few bolts, and uh, what I like to do is I like to take the uh, new part, and kind of see, all right, where are my holes? What am I going to have to take off? And what I notice is we got four little mounting screws for our cap. And when you look at our new guy here, our coil guy on the top has two on the sides. They look pretty small, maybe like a eight millimeter or something, uh, but I'll double check that now. So I'm going to mark this up and I'm going to take out those bolts and this way we can see the rotor which is going to be underneath this guy. Uh, and that's the piece that basically spreads the spark to each of your wires. And uh, in the firing order, that's how, uh, that's how the car runs. So uh, hopefully this makes a pretty good difference. 
All right, so I took off these two screws, got her a little coil cover off. And look at that, sweet looking ignition coil. That's what I realized that we got a couple connectors, electrical connectors back here, three of them all together. Um, there's gonna be tabs right here along the sides. You pull those tabs out, they come right down, and then these guys on the top, don't mix them up. Um, so from where I'm sitting here, it looks like the white one's on the left, brown one's on the right. And actually, you can see I, uh, it's how I marked these guys down too, left, right. So I move those over to the side as well. So now we're going to pop this cap off and see what that looks like underneath. Quick few things to mention. So I was definitely wrong. They're not... Eight millimeters. They are definitely quarter inch. Uh, it's been a while since I worked on something from the 80s, and I forgot that everybody used standard back then. So I almost got these four screws out. Now our new cap comes with new screws, which is a good thing because we do not have a lot of room in here. And there was actually a really reasonable chance that I would have lost one of these screws in the process. Um, they aren't very tight. Like, there's not a lot of high torque on these things, but they're a little tough to get to. And I don't know if you see down here, but in the process, I managed to drop my extension with my uh, quarter-inch socket on the end of it. So, might be handy to have a magnet, and especially if you're going to reuse this old cap, you might want to have one handy just so you don't lose these screws. But when you have one, it makes it a lot easier when you drop it down there. Um... There's a chance I might need to put a little swivel on the end of this to get to these last two screws in the back, but I'm going to try to wing it. Uh, I got it loosened up. I'm thinking I can get the rest by hand. So let's see what happens. All right, so we got the cap off. Um, this is awesome. That means we're almost halfway there. First thing I notice is see all these shiny posts? That means a good electrical contact. But look at this guy. I can't believe that guy was firing. Um, definitely gross, and I'm sure if I turn this thing around, which I will, you know, these guys have seen worse, but I've also seen better. So next thing I'm going to do is these little guys here, I hope we just have to pull them out. These are what connects to these three connectors I talked about earlier. Um, looks like the shape of the connector, you can't really screw them up. That left uh, white one is going to go in, and that right one is going to go into the brown. It doesn't look like there's much getting around that. And then we have a rotor here. And the rotor's pretty simple. We got two screws. Looks like probably the same quarter inch guys as we had before. And the thing you want to look for, at least for wear, you got a big old silver dot there. That's nothing too unusual, better than rusty. But then you want to look at this tip here. And this tip here is going to be what, uh, what puts the electricity out to that cap. So if you have a lot of corrosion here, I recommend just replacing it as long as you got everything apart here. So I'm going to put, I'm going to take the cap off, get all this stuff back together, and then uh, we'll be on to plugs and wires. All right, so if any of you were uh, freaked out about this little HEI coil nonsense that was on the top, I'll be honest, it, it's really, really simple. Um, those little connectors up here, they pull straight out. This one you do last, so you put it into our new guy first, but you can see it kind of curving around here. Um, just pushes in. Uh, everything pulled out. I used um, a small screwdriver and a uh, bent needle nose pliers, and it worked out awesome. So you're going to look in here, and this is our old guy. We have this guy here, which is going to transmit our power. We put that in first, right in the center. Throw in our our uh, little rubber base there and then we're gonna put this coil right on top of all of it now if this comes out as easy as it go when as the other one went we should be good these guys should just quite literally push in and that will give power to what I just figured out is listed on the top of this our tack and our battery <laughs> Cool. I'm going to wrap this up and then we'll be on to the plugs and wires. All right. So as you can see, everything's back together. Don't forget these three electrical connectors on the bottom or you're going to be kicking yourself wondering why this thing won't fire up. 
Um, there are some little fuel lines and vacuum lines around here, so you kind of got to shimmy this thing back in. Just be real careful not to damage the line. I can see right here that this line's been broken at some point before, so uh, they kind of put a little Band-Aid on it, which will absolutely work, but if you can, if possible, try to avoid any of that. So this last step is actually fairly easy on this engine. It's not like the slightly newer vets than this one with the LT1 where they're a particular nightmare. Um, these are actually pretty easy to get to. So you kind of trace your wires down or you can trace them back up. I like to take the plug out with the wire and definitely do them one at a time. Your best bet is to take that wire and match it up with the new wire in the box. Or if you're reusing the old wires, don't even unhook it from the cap. But by doing this, you, you don't mess up the firing order. It's really straightforward. I can go into more detail on this, um, but I don't even think it's really necessary. So I'm going to pop the plugs out, change the wires at the same time, and we're going to fire this baby up and see how she sounds. So got to the right side, and unfortunately it was not quite as easy as the uh, driver's side. Uh, two plugs in particular, this front one... Um, not much room to get to. I'll get back to that one in a second here. But this back one, I figured out if you stick a socket on the end of it, you got just enough room to take a wrench and twist this thing out. So that's the trick to that guy. All right, so this last plug is pretty tough to get at. You don't have a whole lot of room. I found that if you use this 5A spark plug socket, uh, with a 3 8 drive and a 3 8 swivel, you can actually stick it on your plug deep in here, and then you don't have much room to get a wrench in here. So what you'll actually do is you'll go through the wheel well here, underneath our line, and that's how you're going to get this guy on and off. All right, guys, looks like uh, everything's all buttoned up here under the hood. Let's fire her up and see how she sounds. Oh, yeah, I think that was mission success. Stay tuned for the next video. We're going to be looking at all of our trim stuff here that's falling apart on the windows. We're going to be doing some weather stripping, and we're going to be doing all the fluids in this thing. We're going to do an oil change. We're going to drop the gear fluid out of the differential, um, the manual transmission fluid. We're even going to go into the overdrive and uh, replace the filter and gasket on that one. So uh, stay tuned for the next one. Thanks, guys.